The Spiritual Son, Volume 2, Messages of Jesus Christ on the Spiritual Life in the Beyond, given through the inner word to Jacob Lorber, 1842-1843. Explanation of the Fourth Commandment. Millions and millions of souls from children are mentored, taught and provided for in the Kingdom of the Children. Spiritual Son, Volume 2, 67 to 101. The guidance through the children's kingdom takes place by the Apostle of Love, John. Chapter 77 The fourth commandment, as you have it on earth, is Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long and you may prosper on earth. This commandment is as good of divine origin as the first three. But what does it require and what does it promise? Nothing but the obedience of the children to their parents and for this obedience a temporal benefit. Can everyone not ask and say, how can such a divine commandment sanction itself through mere temporal promises and has apparently nothing in the background which offers eternal spiritual advantages? What is up with such a temporal benefit? What does the well-being mean? What the long life, if nothing higher follows after it? It's true, a good and long life is better than a short and bad. But when, at the end of the life period, the inhospitable death appears, and what advantage does the good and long life have above the bad and short? I mean, you do not need to be a fundamental mathematician to say that the difference is overall a pure zero. For the first, as well as the second, overcome a bare nothing. And then it matters very little whether the road to this reception was good or bad. By this measure, the fourth commandment would be based on a very slippery ground, and the parents would indeed be sick of it if their children were born into the world with such philosophy, and the children themselves would find little reason in such consideration to obey their parents. Furthermore, the following critical consideration can be made of this commandment. As the commandment sounds, it has only a temporal basis, that is, merely representing the duty of the children toward their parents. The question then arises, what is the purpose of this commandment here in the spiritual realm, where the children are separated from their parents forever? For if they are separated from their parents, surely they will be relieved of their earthly duty. Nevertheless, here in this fourth hall, we notice this commandment written on the blackboard. Should it be related to the Lord of these children? This could be heard, however, if only the prophecy did not stand under it. To live long and to live on earth. If it were there, to live forever and to live well in heaven, such a transversion of the law would be easy to understand. But a temporal promise in the eternal realm of the spirits sounds a bit strange. What do you think? What will be done here to give this law a fully established divine prestige? Of course you shrug your shoulders and say quietly in yourselves, Dear friend and brother, if it would depend on our discretion here, then there will be a significant snag with the purely divine sphere of this law. For according to the above consideration, one would think it is easy to find not too much spirituality here. But I tell you that exactly this commandment, like almost no other, is purely spiritual. You are now making big eyes, but the thing is no different. But in order to see this at once, I will do nothing but say this law with slightly different words, as it is also said here in this lecture, and you will immediately see the fullness of the truth. But how is it said here? Listen. Children, obey the order of God, which proceeds from his love and wisdom, i.e. father and mother so that you may live long on earth in well-being. What is long life, and what is eternal life compared to it? The long life denotes life in wisdom, 
and long is understood not as a duration, but as expansion and ever greater power of life. For the word or the concept life already implies eternal duration. But the word long does not mean any duration, but only a spreading of the life force, with which the living being always gets deeper into the depths of divine life, and thereby makes his own life more and more perfect, firm and effective. This we now understand, but well-being on earth, what does that mean? Nothing other than the taking unto self of the divine life, for by the earth here is meant the proper being, and the well-being in this being is nothing other than the free being in itself, according to the completely taken unto self divine order. This short explanation is enough to see that this very law is completely of a purely spiritual nature. If you want to check it out more at your leisure, you will find it to be so on your own earth. But here too, it is practically taught to the children, and with the greatest benefit. But now that we know this, we immediately proceed to the fifth room.